Welcome back to the Demon Slayer Gamer Channel. We're going to be continuing our Final Fantasy XIV Dungeon Guide series today. We're going to be taking a look at the Ferris Sirius Hard Mode. Starting off for the trash pools in here, the corruption units will constantly spawn more corruption units. So you just want to AoE these down as soon as possible. They don't have much HP, so they actually go down pretty quick. The corrupted flan will spawn two corrupted slime once you pick them up. They do have a interruptible banish ability if you're super quick. The next area, the Corrupted Sprites, also have the Banish ability that can be interrupted. And the Wolves just do single target Foul Bite abilities. Dropping down the hole to the first boss. Does have a Frontal Cone AoE called Vorpal Blade. So you'll want to keep them facing away from party party members. When the ads, the corruption ads spawn into the fight that tether to a unit, that unit will want to drag it to one of the uh, ads in the room to pass the debuff to it, which kills it whenever the debuff wears off. After this, the corruption will become available to attack and destroy, so you'll want to kill it off as soon as this happens. If the corruption is not killed, then it will transform into a stronger unit and tether to the boss, increasing the amount of damage that the boss does. Make sure to kill the corruption and other units as soon as they appear to reduce the amount of damage being taken. At some point in the fight, the additional adds that are in the room will also start doing AoEs that you'll need to avoid. For the adds in the second area, You'll want to make sure that you're not standing in the AoE from the Time Bomb units. They will destroy themselves, so you don't need to worry about them. The Constructs do have a Frontal Cone ability, so you'll want to keep them facing away from the party. Once you reach the bomb incubator, you will want to focus it down to stop the production of the time bombs. Otherwise, they'll continue to spawn into the fight, meaning there's more AoEs you need to avoid. The Pikmin do have the overpower ability, so this will be a frontal cone that you'll just want to sidestep out of. Once this last group is dead, then they'll drop the candle keep door you'll want to pick up to open up the door to the second boss. During this fight, when the boss casts Strip Mine, everyone will want to move to the outside of the platform to take the least amount of damage from when he slams into the middle of it. After this, he'll spawn corrupted gels that need to be focused down. When 
the furnace men spawn into the fight, you'll also want to focus them down. Along with the engines, as the engines cause the boss to dash around the room and become invulnerable. Batter is a circular AoE around the boss that you'll just want to move out of. The next area will have several bomb incubators, so again, just make sure to focus these down in each fight to prevent having to dodge the AoE from the bombs exploding. The Bedsmen do have an interruptible stone ability, and the Pikmin have the overpower ability that you'll just want to sidestep. Once the first group is dead and the passageway opens up, comes into a room with many adds and many incubators. Just move around the room from incubator to incubator, focusing them down and AOE and the other units at the same time. Once all of the incubators are dead, then you'll want to move over to the units that are attacking the wall. Pick those up and face them away from the wall so no more AoEs are hitting the wall. The objective is to just kill everything before they break through the wall, otherwise more adds come into the fight. For the last boss, Progenitrix, it's actually a two-phase fight. The first phase is whenever Progenitrix is red like this. He will cast Sap, which is a large circular AoE that just needs to be moved out of. When he casts Bombshell Drop, several adds will come into the fight that need to be focused down. The gray bombs are caster type units that will stay in location and cast fire. They will continuously grow as time passes, making them more and more dangerous until eventually they explode, so they're honestly a higher priority than the other ones. After this, Progentrix will turn into Progentor and has the blue flame ability, which is party wide damage and offers a flame resistance debuff to the party, so it's a DPS check to make sure that you kill the boss before you're getting too many of these stacks causing him to wipe the party. Progenitor will also have the sap ability that you'll want to move out of, and when he moves to the center of the platform and casts Big Burst, this is just party-wide damage that would need to be healed through. The gray bomb should be focused down and the regenerator bomb can be hit. But 
that should be it for Pharaoh's Serious Hard Mode. I hope this helped everyone out. If it did, please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you on the next one.